Lord, we're going to go into those things that many are neglecting. And we're going to look at the scriptures for what they are today. We're in the book of Revelation once again. It's not a strange book to us, but it's a book that's telling us of the things that are to come, which are the things that we are experiencing here and now. Hallelujah. Today we're going to talk about a word uh, that is called zeitgeist. And it means the spirit of the age, the spirit of the time, the culture of this age. That's what this word means. And what we find out is that it is an encagement of the world, a trap of the world, a mindset of the world that uh, the world is being placed in through the forces of the social media, the culture of the time, uh, all of the things that are happening, the acceptance of all the different lifestyles that once were taboo to those of us that, that believe and have faith, but now churches are, are bowing down to it. They're wandering after the beast. And this is the spirit of the age, and this is what we want to talk about today. The meaning of that word geist, zeitgeist means spirit of the time is what's going on culturally, religious, religiously, and intellectually during a certain period. And this is what's happening now. We're in a time now that we have never experienced before. And it's being predicted and being fulfilled in the world today. The Word of God have told us and warned us that this time would come, and now we see that it's upon us. It's a spirit that's loose in the earth today, and it's overtaken men and women by storm. There's a, a move and an activity of beauty or glorification of the flesh. We just put it like that. There's a glorification of the flesh. And the Bible already warned us that no flesh should glory in his sight. But we see a glorification of the flesh, which is the spirit of the age, something to captivate your mind and to, to put you in a mindset that you will not be aware of the things that are at hand. That are, of the things that's going to overtake you. And we see that they're being released gradually, but then at once it's going to happen suddenly. The Bible tells us that they're going to say, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come. They're going to be mesmerized and put in a mindset that everything is okay. Then destruction will come upon this earth. The zeitgeist is a type of a hypnosis. It's a type of, of moving the world into a place of anesthesia to take away the pain, to take away the, the knowledge, or to take away the sense of repentance. It's to make you uh, without feeling. You cannot feel the things that you should feel. You cannot feel the move of the Spirit. Many people cannot even feel the presence of the Most High because they are engrafted or engrossed with the Spirit of this age. And the Most High can be right there to rescue them. But because of this great movement that's, that's going on even as we speak, and pulling men and women into it, they cannot feel it. They cannot tell that the Most High is trying to call us to a higher level and a higher standard. In the book of Revelation, chapter number 12 and verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, since these things have already happened, we must know and understand that 
these spirits are loose in our day and our time. There, there is a certain sense of deception that's prevalent in the world today. Yes, there's a spirit of deception that is loose in the earth today. And we as a people, we must be in the knowledge of this. We cannot let this thing overtake us and we cannot allow it to come in and destroy our relationship that we have with the Most High. We cannot allow it to come in and, and replace the thing that we have worked so hard to bring to pass. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him praise. It takes a lot of work to uh, get your life in a realm or in a position or in a certain area where you can hear the voice of the Most High and believe it and even know it. All people do not want to hear his voice because of the spirit of the age have overtaken them and have caused them to become null and void and, and desensitized. See, what this spirit is doing is desensitizing the world as far as the word of the Most High is concerned or the movement of faith is concerned. People have been desensitized. They do not know, they do not feel what they should feel because this world have flooded it out. Hallelujah. It's being flooded out by the activities of the flesh, by the glitz and the glamour of the world. Social media has done the job that it was designed to do. And I believe that it was designed by Satan is a part of uh, the beast system. Yes, yeah, social media is a part of the beast system, and it was designed to pull men and women away from the things of the Most High. It was designed to pull men and women into more shame and de debauchery. It was designed to get your mind off of the things that will bring salvation to you. That's what it was for. Now there is a certain entity that you can utilize it for the good. There's a certain amount of good <clears throat> that's contained in it. But we must decipher it. And we must utilize that good to promote the things of the Most High. Hallelujah. Because, listen family, what I see coming is going to happen so quickly and so rapidly. It's going to overtake men and take them by surprise. And when they know anything, they have been pulled into this beast system in the totality. They have succumbed and agreed to everything that the beast was designed to do. And this is the spirit of the age that we're speaking of. Hallelujah. The zeitgeist. We're going we're gonna to look into a few scriptures today because it's prevalent for us to know that these things are happening. The zeitgeist or the spirit of the age is upon us. And we as a people, we must know and understand. They put a movie out. If you've ever watched a movie, the zeitgeist, it, it depicts and it demoralizes and it, it demonizes the religious movement. And so many are bought into it and they use the falsehood of religion to, to make it more acceptable by all people. So some people, they when they saw that movie, they began to believe that no, we... We're not believing anything to do with the redemption of the, of the cross and all of that stuff was all a hoax. And it was done over and over again by all nationalities, by all people. But deception is strong. If you, if you, don't, if you don't be careful, you can be pulled into deception because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to pull men in 
without them knowing what is happening. All right, let's 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 take a look at the scriptures. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at the scriptures. Let's look in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter number twelve, to start with. It says that, and there appeared an angel, appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in this, with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So we see all of this process that has happened. Much of this that we read about has already taken place. Uh, the dragon is here to destroy us. It's in the earth today. And the dragon is a subtle beast right now. It is winning the hearts and the minds and the souls of the people is winning them through the lust of the flesh, the beauty of the flesh. It's a movement now that everyone is beautiful. It's glorifying all flesh. It does not matter if you have any kind of defect in your, in your flesh. They're trying to make it as a glorification. When we find that in the scriptures, those of us that that were in the sect of the Hebrew nation, they examined the people's flesh to make sure that they were were not diseased. But the world today is trying to beautify all uh, different kinds of fleshly problems or deformities or different things that are are, are not. In the norm of imperfection, they're trying to make imperfection perfect or try to make it as an attraction. This is a spirit of the age as to desensitize you to the acts of the flesh and to make you more vulnerable and acceptable to the movement of this world. Let me cut across the path and go over to... Uh, Revelation the 13th chapter because this is the chapter that gives you much more information it says and I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon the, the, the horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy now this is a sign or a, a typical picture of of the entire world being engrossed with debauchery and gross with blasphemy. This world is, is moving in the activity of blasphemy. We had President Obama that was traveling all over the world trying to get the entire world to accept the alternate lifestyle. And many uh, especially in the African countries, they fought against it. Well, that was a type of, of moving into the zeitgeist or the spirit of the age to accept that type of movement because the Bible says even uh, the Antichrist would not have a desire for women. So it, it, it gives you the, uh, a, a, a snapshot of things to come. All right, let's move on a little bit further in the book of Revelation 13 and 2. It says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was of, of a bear, and his mouth of mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, and his seat, and great authority. So we see that uh, the rise to authority is going to be uh, distributed out to those that have defiled 
mindsets to those that want to contaminate the entire population. It's getting, it's getting to that point today, people, where people once rejected the movement of homosexuality and lesbianism. Now it's being accepted. That's a part of the world wandering after the beast. And I saw one of his heads, it was wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. That's the zeitgeist of the age right there, where it says all the world wandered after the beast. What did the beast do for them to wander after him? It made the world attractive to them. It did something for them to be able to feel comfortable with the whims of this world. And this is what has happened. It has given everyone a platform to whereby they can feel comfortable with exposing and giving all of their intricate desires and displaying them right on the, the screen. Whether it's, it's right or wrong, we, we got people that are saying, don't be ashamed to, to show your real true self. In other words, what they're saying is, flaunt your sinfulness don't be ashamed of of your your sinful desires that's what it's telling you that's the world wandering after the beast verse number four says and they worship the dragon and which gave power unto the beast and they worship the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him so in other words they're giving in to him. He's got more powerful. He's more powerful than anything. How are you going to fight against it? You might as well bow down to it. That's what that, that scripture is really saying. They worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Who is able to stop him? Who is able to keep this thing back? It's too strong for us. That's what they're saying. But they have forgotten about the most high. They forgot about him. He has all power. This is a time of testing for us, people. All right, verse number five says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So this power that was given unto him was a certain time frame. So this is what should should really give you a, a sense of security that it only has a time limit for this thing to happen. So we must purpose in our heart and our mind that we're not going to succumb to this movement or this zeitgeist of the age. We're not going to bow down to it. If you take a look at the social media, you got all type of videos that are out now that that are, are designed to take away your morals, designed to take away your holiness and your godliness. You have to search. You have to look for videos that, that are, are wholesome. But for the most part, it's pulling people that were once wholesome over into receiving and accepting this movement that's going on. You should never stop praying. You should never stop praying to, to give in to some kind of other remedy. If, 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 if you're going to go to another remedy, at least couple it with prayer, you should never stop praying. Hallelujah. To take something else over and above the system and the remedy that the Most High has given us is a type of just reneging on, on the powers that, that, that is able to, to keep you and heal you and take you to heights unknown. You should never stop praying. Uh, let's continue. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwelt in heaven. So this, this spirit or this zeitgeist of the age 
is participating in all type of blasphemies. Hallelujah. It's causing the world to wander after the beast. And we cannot be caught up in that. We cannot put ourselves in that predicament as to receive all of this craziness and foolishness that's in the earth today. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Verse number seven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Did you hear that, people? At this particular time, it's going to look like all hope is lost. It's going to seem like it's a lost cause. Because look at what the scripture says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, with the people that, that have uh, position themselves to be believers and to trust in the Most High. He's coming after us individually and personally. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. It's going to look like he's winning. And a lot of the people are bowing down. A lot of people are succumbing to the zeitgeist of the spirit of the age and being pulled right into it. And the power was given over him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So he's going to not only overpower uh, or try to overcome the saints, but everyone else that's in this whole system of the world. He's coming against everybody. Hallelujah. But we, it's a few of us that are going to be able to stand against this. Those of us that are prayed up, those of us that are watching and waiting and, and really positioning ourselves, he's not going to take out everybody, but the majority will be taken out at this time. Listen at that scripture again. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given over him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So he's going to have power over everybody. How, where did he get it from? People relinquished it by receiving. They received his uh, 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 will to to take away them and to put, take away from them their status of holiness and replace it with the desires of the flesh. That's how he overcame them. That's how he caused them to buy into it. All right. And that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So there is a remnant of people that are safe and sound. And this is what we're doing on a daily basis to make, make it that we are those, that we are one of those or, or in that number whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is a serious situation that's right upon us. And, and it's causing many to fail, causing many to falter. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now this is a very, very peculiar scripture because it's speaking of the true people of the Most High and what has happened to them and the perpetrators of evil that caused what happened to them to take place. There is a reverse going on here. It's sort of like speaking about the, the prelude that comes before our deliverance. How that the world's going to wander after the beast is going to look like all hope is lost. Uh, it's going to be a lot of people that throw in the towel and give up. 
But at that time, the Bible says that he that lead it into captivity, shall, they must go into captivity. And he that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the reaping time uh, is, is going to come upon the earth. The tide will turn at, at a sudden time. It's going to just flip real quick. This is why it's not worth you giving in and buying in to the spirit of the age. It's too costly. It can cost you all the time, all the, all the preparation that has gone into your life to live a life that is dedicated to the Most High can be thrown away overnight because of the beast system. Hallelujah. Verse number 11 says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. And he exercised all power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So we see all of these things transpiring and the world that was once divided and separated, the, the, the powers that be seem to come together at this point because the beast is come to maturity at this point. Everything has come to a head. The world at this point is at, is at its total end. Sin and iniquity has come to a head at this point. And so all that have, have cashed in on it are going to have to pay the piper at that point. Hallelujah. And listen to what it says as we go further. And he that go, and he that doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. So you're going to start seeing men doing all kinds of magical tricks. Yes, you, you're going to see the, them being empowered by Satan. Some of the things that you see is nothing but empowerment of the beast. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So we see all of these things taking place, <clears throat> they're happening so quickly. And, and most of us have forgotten because we, we are engrossed with the, the movement or the wandering after the beast. People are, are mesmerized with themselves, mesmerized with one another. Social media has hypnotized most people and, and they have lost their way and don't even know it. Church has uh, has contaminated itself as to think, some churches, let me put it like that, as to think that shouting or dancing in the church is the, the, the order of the day. But at this particular time, it's not going to be a shouting time or dancing time. It's time to sit down at the table and to make sure that you understand what is happening. Esoteric movement is good, it's fine, but it's time for you to get some sense and to know what is happening. Hallelujah. So that you can be ready. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. That at that particular time, let me explain something real quickly because my time is almost up. For instance, right now, it may not seem like you can stand in the face of of those that's going to say either you uh, obey or uh, uh, bow down to us or we're going to take your life. At this particular time, it may not seem like you can say, I'm not bowing down, I'm not going with you. But the prayers that you pray and all the preparation time that you put in, at that particular time, strength is going to come from somewhere. 
those prayers that we talked about that are laid up in heaven will be released on you at that particular time, and you'll have power to say no to the devil. You'll have the strength and the energy from somewhere to say no to the enemy. I'm going to stand with the Most High. Why? Because you have prayed. You'll be like Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane who said, not my will, but thy will be done. Where did that come from? He prayed so much so that he had hemohydrosis. In other words, blood was coming from his sweat pores. He was praying so intensely. So this is why we must continue to seek the face of the Most High because this time is going to overtake us so quickly. It's going to happen so fast until... People are going to just, it's going to be like a tsunami without a warning. Hallelujah. All right, let's continue so I can conclude here. Verse number 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause uh, that they, as many as would not worship the image of the beast, should be killed. See what I'm saying? So you're going to have to have some extra strength from some place. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, say, he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this is why we do what we do, sisters and brothers. This is why we continue to pray, seek the face of the Most High, because we don't know where we are in particular. All we know is that we must stand in faith and continue until that day. Hallelujah. We do know that. And the last verse says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So we see that the world hasn't changed and the word hasn't changed. It's the same thing. It's, it, it has it has persisted unto this day and we as a people we must be prepared for the zeitgeist of the age it's coming in it's here it's already pulling people in and and stealing their mindset stealing their hopes and their dreams away the spirit of the age is strong it's powerful and it was utilized through social media to hypnotize and nethetize people to where they do not feel or do not understand the sincerity of the choices that they make. Many that were against a lot of the activities of a lot of the sexual immoralities are susceptible to them now because they have not protected themselves in prayer and have not trained themselves against the spirit that's going on in the earth. So we as a people, we must prepare ourselves. We must be ready. We must not let this world steal everything from us because the zeitgeist is real. The spirit of the age is real. Hallelujah. Let us pray out. Father, we thank you again and again and again we thank you for another day another time how you continue to help us take us through and keep us we pray that you bless those that are listening today those that may not understand this message it's not so much so that we're giving glory to the beast, but Father, we're revealing what this world is doing to us. 
by the means in which it's doing it. It's taking and stealing the attention that men should be paying to you and giving to other sources. Help us to be real. Help us to be one that will call upon you when all else fails. Save us before the wrath that is to come. In the name of Yahweh Shai, let the world know as Jesus. We're going to say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. All right, family, that's all we have today. We have given you what the Most High has given us. And we hope that you receive it. Beware of the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, the deceptive spirit. It will deceive you without you even knowing it. That's how deception works. All right, that's all I have. I pray and trust that you will enjoy your Shabbat today, that you will allow the Most High to speak to you. Long after we're done praying, that you sup with him and he with you during the day, that you keep your mind focused on him because the spirit of the age is upon us. And if you take notice, you can see it. You can feel it. It even tries to pull you into it. Hallelujah. All right, family, that's all we have today. We're going to say peace and blessings. Hallelujah. Shalom.